I know this video is running just a little bit late today for those that watch it at 7 o'clock. I decided to re-record it. I didn't like the way that I had said what I said. I'm trying to find a way to, to equate the things that we're talking about with what's going on in Israel right now. I recorded Monday and Tuesday on Friday before the events in Israel began. But I think it's appropriate that we continue looking at this because of the ideas that many have about what those events mean. And many people still see Israel in some future sense as where God will set up his throne. The Bible, as I read it, does not teach that. The Bible teaches that God planned a way for mankind to be redeemed. And that way is through Jesus Christ. He established a people through Abraham, a people through which his seed would come. That seed is Christ. And the way to God is through Christ. Jesus himself said that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. God's people today are not Israel, is not Israel. God's people today is not America. God's people today is his church. And yes, with all respect to Israel and what they have done for the world and bringing about Christ. Yes, what Hamas is doing and has done is terror. And the response that Israel feels they need to make in declaring war is hard to understand from the loss of life point of view. But these events are political in nature. These events are the wars that happen in the world. As we've looked at Matthew 24, we mentioned that the wars and rumors of wars in Matthew 24 are not about the end of time, but are about the destruction of Jerusalem. So let's see what Jesus has to say about that as we continue reading. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29, Matthew 24 and verse 29. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the son of man will appear in the sky and all the tribes of earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds in the sky with great power, with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. This is not a prophecy of end times. This is a prophecy of the establishment of God's people, the church. The gathering of his people from the four winds is the gathering of people from all over the world to be a part of his people. This is still about the destruction of Jerusalem and the coming of the age of the Son of Man. In other words, the coming of the church, this new kingdom. Jesus is not saying that these events that happened before point to his coming again for the end of time. But it's the end of the age that they were living in then, in the beginning of a new age, the new age of his kingdom, the church. Uh, Paul would tell us in Colossians that we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. As Christians, who have come to God through Christ, we are part of that kingdom. We have been gathered from the four corners, the four winds of the earth. We are now in a relationship with God through Christ. That's what he is talking about. We'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow when we look at this lesson of the fig tree and why I say everything at this point in Matthew chapter 24 is about the destruction of Jerusalem and the establishment of a new kingdom. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, I thank you so much for the blessings you give us. Father, as we look at the events that are going on over the world, all over the world, but specifically in Israel, Father, we pray that you will be with the leaders, that peace can be found, and that the loss of life will end. Father, for those who have missing loved ones, those who have lost loved ones, 
Father, we pray for peace and comfort. Father, we know that as long as people are focused on the wrong things, as long as people are focused on selfishness, as long as nations are focused on on pride, as long as people are not focused on you through Christ, that there really is no peace. Father, help us who are in Christ to be at peace with each other through Christ. And help all to see the need to come to you through him. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to continuing our lesson tomorrow. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.